turn your interview lighting from this to this in eight steps. Here's how to do it. To help you remember the eight steps to light an interview, I created an acronym with the word lighting. Step one, lock in your frame. Before setting up any lights, you need to decide what the frame of your shot is gonna be. A few things to consider when picking your frame is there a window you can include to provide life to the image. What angle is gonna provide the most depth? Are there any leading lines that you can take advantage of? I personally like to include windows in my frame when possible to give my key light motivation, and I like to shoot into the corner rooms to provide depth to the shot. This also typically provides nice leading lines with the lines of the walls and the ceiling. In this situation, I didn't have a window that I could use within the room, but I did have a corner of the room that I could shoot into, so I decided to use that corner to provide the most depth to the shot. Step two, identify uncontrollables. This goes hand in hand with locking in your frame, but are there any items in the location that that you can't control. If so, you need to decide whether you're gonna include them in the frame or shoot around them. For example, if a wall is lined with windows, the first thing you wanna do after setting your frame is adjust the exposure of your shot for the outside lighting that you can't control. Oftentimes, this means stopping down your image so that the windows aren't blown out. Additionally, if there are any physical items in the location that you can't move, you might need to adjust your angle so that they aren't in the shot. Step three, grab your key. The first light that you typically want to set up is your key light. This is the light that's going to illuminate your subject. Your key light is generally the most important light in your setup. For interviews, I like to shoot with a Rembrandt lighting style, which means you'll set the key about 45 degrees off the center of your subject. This means the light is going to be about 45 degrees off the nose of your subject. So in this case, you can see we have the light right up here, the key light right up here, and it's coming across my face right here. This casts a nice light across the face of the subject and provides a flattering shadow fall off across the opposite side of their face, giving shape to the subject. You'll often see in Rembrandt lighting style, a little triangle on the cheek of the subject on the opposite side of the light. Step four, hair light. Hair light, backlight, and rim light are all the same thing, so you might hear these terms used interchangeably, but this is the light that's gonna separate the subject from the background. You're gonna wanna place it behind your subject, over top of them, and angle down to give a nice glow to the back of their hair. For this example, I actually didn't have another C-stand on me available, to put a hair light behind me, so I actually ended up using the overhead light in the room to provide a nice little bit of hair light on the back of my hair. Step five, tackle the fill light. The type of interview you're gonna be shooting is gonna determine the amount of fill, if any, that you want in your shot. For moodier videos, I like to use little to no fill to provide a more contrasty image. For lighter, happier videos, I like to use more fill to provide a brighter, more even image. For this shot, I'm not using any fill to provide a more contrasty shot. So I don't have any reflector or any sort of additional light on the opposite side of my key light filling in the shadows on this side, which provides that moodier type feel, which is personally just a style that I like to shoot in. Step six, insert practicals. I'm an absolute sucker for some nice practical lights. Practical lights are gonna give motivation to your lights. For example, if you have a hair light, it's a great idea to include a practical light in the background of your shot to provide motivation to the glow on the subject's hair. In this shot, I'm using a lamp in the background right over here over my shoulder and my aperture spotlight mount over here over my other shoulder as practical lights. The lamp in the background provides motivation for the warm hair light on the back of my head and the spotlight mount has a gobo in it to resemble the look of sun coming through a window shade casting through that tree in the background. Step seven, neat in the frame. Once you have the majority of your lights set up, take a look back at your frame to see if there's anything that needs adjusted. Does anything need removed from the shot? Do you need to adjust any of your lights? Do you need to adjust your camera at all? Step eight, garnish the shot. Like a 12 ounce New York strip from your local five star steakhouse, it's time to garnish this thing. Add in any items that can provide some additional spice to the shot. I like to add items into the foreground to give the shot more depth, and one of my all time favorite things to do is throw a fake tree in the back of my shot. It gives the shot some extra life. I picked up this fake tree from Ikea and I literally throw it in the trunk of my car and take it to shoots. There's been many times when I'm shooting in a boring conference room and I'll take this fake tree out of my trunk and throw it in the corner of my shot to liven things up. So there you have it, the eight steps to capture a beautiful image for your 
your interviews. If you wanna learn how to turn your passion for videography into a six-figure income and full-time career, in my slightly biased opinion, the absolute best next thing that you can do is get a free copy of my book. I've packed everything that I've learned that's helped me turn my videography business into a six-figure income and full-time career into the 240 pages of this book, and I'm giving it to you for free. Completely free, that's right, absolutely free. Just click the first link in the description below to get a free copy. Like this video if you found value in it, and subscribe if you wanna see more videography tutorials in the future. I'll see you in the next one.